Good evening, hello and welcome to the first ever episode of This Week in the Tech News, a show that is going to try and cover all of the most important happenings in the tech world of the week. This is quite an important show to start on, or date to start on, I should say, because the new iPhone, or gaggle of iPhones, was released yesterday. Intel has some interesting news, and AMD is trying to start up that whole hype train all over again, which we know, you know, it always ends up so well for them. Now, I think the story to start off with is the new release of the iPhone. Uh, they released three new iPhones. Uh, two of them is the kind of normal, the normal release schedule of the iPhone and then the iPhone Plus. And there's not much exciting going on with that release in particular because, well, it's just the iPhone 7 with a slightly better camera or, well, I mean, they say it's a much better camera. We'll, 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 we're, we're yet to see that. Um, a faster processor and a slightly brighter screen with a bit more battery life. Uh, they have been pushing augmented reality quite a lot in the new release, which is quite exciting. I like the idea of, of kind of using a hunter cam walking around and having information about the world kind of overlaid onto what I see, but it's still a bit awkward wandering around going in a public space. I don't know, that's something I don't feel hugely comfortable with. Um, but those two releases aren't the interesting ones. They aren't the ones that everybody's excited about. The more exciting of the iPhone releases is the iPhone 8X. Actually, not iPhone 8X, it's just the iPhone X. Or they're calling it the iPhone 10, which is a bit weird because it means in two generations it's going to be like, what are they going to call the current generation of iPhone? Are they going to have it the iPhone 10 but written with a number? And then if you have an iPhone X, you have to clarify that I have the iPhone 10, but with the X, not with the number. It, it, it's a bit of a weird kind of naming scheme that seems a bit like they're backing themselves into a wall, to be honest. But the iPhone 10 does seem really great. It looks beautiful with its kind of full front face of screen, which apparently, according to them, won't just break because it's this new type of glass that's really hardy and the aluminium back is surgical grade aluminium which is somehow better than non-surgical grade aluminium and it's got great stuff like uh, like wireless charging something which is available in the other iPhone as well but you know it's good that they finally jumped onto that train something that Samsung's been doing for a while um, but you know it, it doesn't matter it's still a great feature um, they have an OLED screen in it. Finally, they've got a, like just a new piece of technology when it comes to the screens for the phone, and it's all super high resolution, um, which is quite exciting. It's got the same processor in than the iPhone 8, but they, they didn't say that like it's a bad thing. They said, oh wow, it's 70% faster than the previous generation. Yay, we're so great. Um, although in the tech press event, they did have a bit of an unfortunate fail with the FaceTime feature that they tried to show off, um, which was quite funny, but it didn't take away from the event. It all still went quite well, and the iPhone X looks great. On all counts, except for the fact that it's going to cost you more than a small house. Um, I think the entry-level price for the iPhone X is going to be $1,000, which is a lot for a phone. Uh, yes, it looks nice, but it's a thousand dollars for a phone. Um, but apparently the reason they're having it a thousand dollars for a phone is because it recreates the exclusive feel of the original iPhone, which I think is a bit stupid because, well, like, do you really want people to feel like they can't have one? Um, but then it makes the people who have one, you know, feel better about it. Uh, but I think, you know, knowing Apple, they're charging a thousand dollars for the iPhone 10 because well, they can charge a thousand dollars for the iPhone 10, and people are still going to buy them religiously. Um, otherwise, in the event, they also released the Apple TV, which is pretty much just a television. Like, I don't really know why it's different that it's Apple. They're almost definitely using a Samsung panel in it anyway. And um, yeah, that was pretty much it. And now let's move over to the Intel camp, which interestingly, Intel has seemingly quite an quite a similar technique to, to Apple when it comes to releasing new hardware. Release a new piece of hardware once 
more or less every year and have them pretty much indistinguishable from the previous generation, but then release some overarching flagship product that pretty much nobody's going to afford, but then a lot of people still want to buy and it ends up being good but just hugely overpriced. Um, and that's pretty much what they're doing this time. But no, it isn't. This is actually one of the first possibly interesting releases on the mainstream platform for Intel in a really long time. Um, so alleged benchmarks have been leaked of the 8700K and it's pretty interesting because it's the mainstream platform for Intel has been stuck on four cores for a very long time, but they're finally bringing out a six core mainstream processor, which we could possibly thank AMD for, I don't really know, but it is really exciting because one of the huge advantages of the kind of mainstream Intel platform has always been its single threaded performance. And then Ryzen came along with eight cores, which meant that the single threaded performance, even though it wasn't that great, wasn't hugely important because there was twice the amount of cores and twice the amount of logical cores. But now with six of those much faster cores, we're looking at a potentially very fast processor. Um, earlier indications have, have, have kind of pointed towards a 57% increase in multi-threaded performance from the 7700K to the 8700K, but some, some YouTubers have actually released, um, released kind of hands-on benchmarks of the 8700K at an event where they found an, a, an HP Omen machine standing there with an 8700K in it, and um, it looks pretty promising. We have to take these results with a bit of a grain of salt, but it still looks very exciting. And um, in the other camp on AMD's side, AMD decided that it's a good idea to already start uh, teasing their new generation of Vega GPUs, which, you know, considering that they spent like a year teasing, Ve like, teasing the current generation of Vega, and going on about how because it's got HBM2 and because of how huge it is, it's going to be the most powerful thing ever released and, and NVIDIA is going to crumble to its knees before AMD. And then Vega 64 comes out and it's pretty much not even as fast as a year old NVIDIA graphics card right before NVIDIA is about to release a new generation of graphics cards. Well, not right before, but it's towards the end of, of uh, Pascal's life, lifespan. Um, and now, just after the kind of disappointing blob that was Vega 64, they decided that, no, we're going to start with the new Vega series. We're going to get people excited about it all over again so that they can get disappointed about it all over again. They're saying that they're going to have up to 32 gigs of HBM2 that can run up to a terabyte per second of memory bandwidth, which is all super exciting sounding. But the thing is, whenever all they have to go on about is the amount of HBM that they're going to be putting in it, HBM meaning high bandwidth memory, by the way, um, then it, it, it kind of means that the rest of the package is potentially a bit of a disappointment. Um, so I think, I, I think AMD should really think about how it hypes products because all they do is potentially set themselves up for a huge disappointment, uh, which Vega 64 was. And um, that's coming from somebody who spent a year waiting for Vega 64 and then ended up buying a GTX 1080 three days after Vega was released or a couple, like a couple weeks after Vega was released. Um, so yes, let's hope that they're not digging another hole that they can't dig themselves out of. And now with all of the main stories out the way, I think it's time for a couple of shorter snippets of tech news. Now, firstly, going back to the Intel camp, Intel has decided or announced that they're going to be discontinuing the Skylake range of CPUs, which I didn't realize they hadn't done yet. Um, and on a bit of a different trajectory, Battlefield 1942 is coming back with an HD remake. Uh, they're calling it a 4K remake, actually, uh, which is potentially quite exciting, but it might also be pretty horrible because usually how these kind of HD remakes works out is they just shoehorn some blown out textures into an old game and hopefully sell some copies. Um, and let's hope that that's not what happens. And on other news, Steam has reached 
the kind of a, a record of the amount of games released in a single year and player unknown battlegrounds has is pretty close to to dota 2's record on steam of having some of the most kind of active users which is exciting or disappointing to considering how you were treated by by the whole streamer debacle um, every time you go onto Steam's um, onto Steam's library of player unknown battleground, all you see is 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 a bunch of negative reviews where people are complaining about how. I, and I think I actually think it's one specific streamer that's been doing this. It's not even just like streamers in general, but one streamer who has been getting a lot of players banned because the moment that he says anything, player unknown battlegrounds bans them for like, oh how dare you drive past the steamer and hoot or run him over or whatever. So that's, um, if, you, if, if that happened to you, I think you're not gonna be excited about the fact that a bunch of people bought an unfinished game, um, but if you enjoy it, you'd be excited about that because there mean, that means there'll be a lot of active servers. Yay. Anyways, thank you very much for watching the very first episode of This Week in the News. Subscribe to the channel if you don't want to miss upcoming This Week's in the News, which will be coming out every week on Wednesday. And I've also got a lot of other tech kind of content that I'm going to be bringing out. Um, wow, I just spat quite far there. A bunch of other tech content that's going to be coming out. So do subscribe to the channel to see it. If you liked the video, do like. Um, if you disliked it, dislike the video. And yes, until next week, thank you very much for watching.